Hello everyone and welcome. This is Joseph Zabrowski giving you guys an update on a recent email that was sent out by Travelada. Um, the title of this video is something along the lines of um, what you can do to get your money from Travelada. As you know, Travelada uh, has not paid its people over the last month or so. Uh, March 15th they were saying that they were going to start paying them again and it's looking like all the other scams out there that uh, you know they, they go through this process to gradually get to the place where they don't pay you and they come up with all kinds of excuses and um, I told you I was gonna show you or tell you what you can do as a group of people and I speak from experience we have a legal group and we've been together for quite some time now uh, we're made up of about seven people and um, we have been working on probably the biggest cryptocurrency heist case in history okay now, throughout the process of working on this case interviewing numerous attorneys finding out how people work um, we know we know how to do this type of thing we we know all the steps involved and um, we are right now considering you know like going public with this because we are in such dire need in our space presently there's so many criminals in this space um, and you know there's so many victims as well so number one we're gonna we're, we're just talking about it right now because we're still dealing with this case we're really still at the beginning of this case but um, <clears throat> what I'm here to tell you is if the people of Travelata come together as a force you can very easily bring forth a class action lawsuit and I would be happy to help you in this um, endeavor and on the screen I already did a video as to the general steps that need to take place and they're on the screen right now so basically number one you always um, you know the title of this video is what you need to do and is if you come together as a group you have to you know for example you get a group on telegram and which is a very private place to have a group and you get leaders you get a group of leaders okay and ideally you get as many people involved in this lawsuit as possible because the bottom line when all is said and done the big agencies like the FTC and others they like cases that have big numbers big numbers of people that have been victimized and they like big numbers in terms of dollar amounts large amounts of money that have been lost by large amounts of people okay so Travelata as a group we would have the ability to do that okay and so essentially what you do is once you get the group together you have to come up with some leaders some people who are really committed and who are really willing to work on this okay and those people are the ones who initiate everything and you use your group as much as you can to bring forth all the data, all the claims of the business, for example, with Travelata, all the claims that they have made uh, versus all of the ways that they have not met their claims. Okay, so you you gather all your data, your visuals, you do testimonials. That's what was a big part of our deal. We have numerous testimonials of people who have been victimized by these scandalous groups uh, that are running these. You know, they're just criminal operations. Okay, so um, once you do that, of course, as you're doing that, I should say, number one, as you can see on the screen, you always get everybody in your group to file a police report. You can file a police report at your local police station. There's all kinds of places online where you can file a police report. Um, but you get that document ready for each person who's involved in the lawsuit, okay? because you cannot do due do, do process with any of these bigger agencies without having a police report they will not take you seriously okay so number one file the police report number two you submit complaints online to all the important agencies as I have listed here the FBI FTC SEC if it's securities related consumer protection agency BVB attorney general in the state where the company is located consumer affairs in the city uh, the company is located um, and there's various other groups that you can file complaints with as well okay the reason you do that is so that you can show very clearly that numerous people have been affected by this company or group okay so you're setting yourself up here in the process and it really doesn't take a whole lot of time to these to do these things I mean it's a little bit of effort but you remember you want to get your principal and interest back 
and there's a good chance that you can okay I'm gonna explain that in just a moment now once number one and two are in place you contact local state and federal media newspapers and TV news stations okay we've already done that um, and once our case is filed which is going to be here I think this week we're then gonna start going to the media okay and then you bring forth your lawsuit okay you bring forth your lawsuit um, you know actually in our case we first found our lawyer we interviewed numerous lawyers um, we did put a little media piece out there but then we at the um, at the discretion of our attorney we asked him if we should continue to put this out in the media and he told us let's wait until the case is filed so in many cases you would wait till the uh, case is filed and then you go to the newspapers and the news stations okay and then you bring forth your your litigation with your attorney all right and I can almost assure you for example if one of these agencies um, finds that your case is worthy it has merit um, you know they will investigate the people or group that you're talking about and the basic way that this works in general terms is that they'll investigate that person or group and then if they find that they are guilty they'll have them they'll have them come in and they'll testify they'll subpoena that particular person or the people they'll come in and they'll testify once they testify they'll then do they'll go through the fact finding process with all of your data that you've accumulated and see if what you're saying is really true they find out that it's true they will then freeze the assets of the people involved in the company that you're dealing with and once they freeze the assets you guessed it a good part of those assets they're gonna to go to your attorney but they're also gonna to go to the people who have been victimized and in those assets are gonna be your principal and interest it's thus it's a very worthy endeavor to carry this out and here here's the whole other um, idea of this as a group of people you can get a lot of work done so when you're going through the different parts that are on the screen here you're getting all your ducks in a row okay and what you're doing is you're setting up a, a beautiful scenario for your attorney okay you're setting up a scenario where your attorney can see that you you guys got your act together okay and he's not gonna have to do all the work and he likes that he's essentially just gonna have to file the case and follow your notes and work on it some and and bring it to fruition okay and as a result there's one part that I left out in here you know because we had so much information and data we had everything all of our ducks in a row then when we went to our we chose our attorney his retainer fee was only ten thousand dollars now listen to me on this okay ten thousand dollars is pretty low for a huge case and the reason it was only ten thousand dollars is because he knows that we're probably gonna win I mean we have a really really good chance because we have so much data and everything okay but here's the thing how do we get that ten thousand dollars very simply go to a place like GoFundMe and have you know put in an amount that everybody has to to the people who want to be part of a lawsuit and they want to you know make you know get their return from this lawsuit they have to put in a certain amount in GoFundMe in our case it was hundred and twenty five dollars so everybody puts in hundred twenty five dollars and we raised ten thousand dollars in I think it was less than three weeks so this is very doable my friends and um, and so once the attorney gets the retainer fee he starts working on your case so you can do this and it's worthy it's so worthy of doing because not only are you going to have a good chance of getting your money but you're gonna put the criminals in prison and we live at your your attorney will will file a case civil civil or criminal or both ideally both um, I say both because criminal is important because these are the people that that are just screwing people's lives they are literally making victims in this it's like a a war field a, a field you know like uh, a field of war that we're in here it's like a walking through a mining field everywhere we look to the left and right there's a we have to be afraid that there's a scammer that we're getting involved with and we need to clean up this space and as we start policing this space as people start standing up in this space um, you know these criminals are gonna be uh, fewer and far between okay so that's the whole idea here now 
I hope that made sense to you. But we're going to continue. In this case, let me just go to the most recent message that uh, Phil Piccolo, also known as Felicity at Travelada, Felicity Castiello, he uses an alias name. You never go with a group where the guy doesn't show his face. He gives you an alias name. I didn't know it was an alias name until after the fact. But at any rate, I'm not going to go through his entire email, but I'm going to go to this part right here. Okay, It says, currently, he, he says, Travelada is not going anywhere since it took over a million dollars to put the program in place with all the travel benefits, 192 cruise lines, etc. Okay, and then he goes on to say that currently the company owes $325,000 plus another $400,000 needed to double everyone's cost. This is regarding the TACP program. In fact, of the $325,000 debt, $200,000 is owed to one individual who has no problem waiting for his money. Okay, so in other words, now we've heard uh, Phil Piccolo tell you how committed he is to this business in the past. He and... Uh, Kevin, what is it, Kevin Johnson, I forget it, uh, Dalton, jo Kevin Dalton Johnson and Reed and the other one, uh, they all work together. If you're not aware of it, they have a, um, uh, a major lawsuit brought, to, brought against them by Vista Network. Um, Vista Network in their complaint and their lawsuit say that they, they have, uh, that Travelada stole over $700,000 in cryptocurrency from them. They took their email list of 30,000 people. An email list of 30,000 people is worth much more than $700,000. You can make millions of dollars off of an email list of 30,000 people, okay? And you can be sure that when they stole that list, they, they used that list to advertise Travelada to, okay? So basically here, now it's really important you listen, you guys, because this cadre of criminals is telling you that you know, we could pay everybody off with all of their principal and interest for $400,000. Okay, that's what he's basically saying. Now, keep that in mind and keep in mind the fact what I just told you. Okay, the case being brought against them, they're saying that they, took, they stole over $700,000 and additional monies as well. Um, and they stole an email list, where they, which they probably made over a million dollars. I don't know what the number is, but they made a good amount of money through that email list. I can, I can assure you. So let's just say when all is said and done, through those two ventures of Travelada, that they made a couple million dollars. Maybe I'm off a little, but we'll just say a couple million dollars. Okay. Now keep in mind that they, all, all they have to do to get through this is come up with cough up four hundred thousand dollars. So two, let's just say two million dollars out of that whole fiasco. Okay, so now let's go to, hold on to your horses, let's go to Phil Piccolo. This is Phil Piccolo, and there's numerous sites. I've done numerous videos about this in the past. And Phil Piccolo supposedly has three homes, okay? And on the screen here, you can see a $3 million mansion, Phil Piccolo's $3 million mansion. This, was, this website was created many years ago, so that mansion is probably worth 4 to $5 million by now. Okay, we'll just say $4 million, low case scenario. Now, now, as you can see here, it says 2330 Northeast 34th Court. Okay, now we're going to go to a publication that I've shown you in the past. This is a blog that talks about the Vista Network lawsuit against Travelada, Phil Piccolo, and his cronies. And in here, one of the guys, uh, Lindell, says that I have not checked Phil's address for quite some time in Florida, but here are the three he uses. And that is the 2330 Northeast 34, 34 Court Lighthouse Point, Florida. The house is listed under Dina Zimkowitz. He always puts his homes under different people's names so that when people bring lawsuits against him, they can't place a lien on his house, okay? So it's a typical maneuver by a criminal. And so um, so as I showed you right here, that's the same address of this house right here. The point that I'm making is that this, he got this address right. He probably has the other two addresses right as well. 2545 East Sunrise Boulevard, 6400 North Andrews Avenue, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, it says this house is listed under one of his aliases, John Nocton. Okay, so there's a chance that, very good chance that Phil Piccolo has three homes. Now, we know that this one home is probably worth, you know, three to five million dollars, as shown here. Okay, and who knows? I mean, here's the overview of that house, and here's the actual picture of it. You can see it, a beautiful house, isn't it? With the red Corvette, that's his Corvette. And you, 
you could probably be assured it's worth at least four million, something like that. Um, it says it says Phil's three million dollar Florida mansion. Okay, so let's we had the original two million, and let's just say that this is four million. Okay, so that's six million. Now let's just say out of the two other homes that he has, they're probably millionaire homes. You know, they're probably let's just let's just say that they're a million a pop. Since this one's probably around four million, let's say that they're just we'll go a lowercase scenario. <clears throat> Give them the benefit of the doubt, a million a pop. So that's another two million. So we're at eight million dollars. Uh, we at least know that he has a probably a net worth of eight million dollars just in homes and so forth. Now, as we go down here, we see that Phil has a big car collection, and this is actual a quote by Phil. Phil tells us my new car collection is valued at over two million dollars. Brand new toys, power top, red convertible Corvette, and so on down the line. It's signed by Philip Angelo P. Piccolo at that same address, 2330 Northeast 34th Court in, Flo in Lighthouse Point, Florida. So let, he's got two, over $2 million in cars. So we'll add that to our number. What were we at? Uh, is it $4 million, $6 million, um, $8 million. So that's now, now we're at about $10 million as part of his net worth. He also has a 60-foot yacht. I have no idea what the price of a yacht, but I'm sure it's millions of dollars, right? A 60-foot yacht? It's probably, I, we'll just say a million dollars, okay? So so now we're at 11 million. He has a big old speedboat. I don't know what that's worth either. But probably between the two of them, a couple mil. I don't know. Let's just say a couple mil, all right? So we'll say it's we're at 12 million. And then he's got other toys as well. So, So now this is a guy who probably has a net worth of at least Low case scenario, at least $12 million. Now let's go back to that email that he just sent out to everybody, that he's so concerned about everybody. And he says, all we have to come up with is $400,000, <coughs> and we're really working at it. Up here he says, he tells us that we are working every day to help TACP continue to make and release payments. Between the Vista lawsuit, the demise of the Canadian cryptocurrency company, and most of all, this idiot on YouTube who we loaned $2,000 to purchase the $9,000 leadership package. He's trying to talk about me, okay. He's telling you that they're trying to work this out. They're trying to come up with the $4,000. Now, this is a guy who probably has a net worth of at least $12 million, as I just showed you, right? So why can't, if he's really so concerned, he says travel out is not going anywhere since it took over a million dollars to put that program in place, blah, 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 and we're working every day, we're so committed to this. So why doesn't he just like take 400K out of the 12 million in equity in his, in his homes and stuff, in his cars? I mean, if he really cared about you, if he really cared about Travelada, don't you think if it really meant something to him that he would just, I mean, 400, 400K is like a drop in the bucket for a guy who has a $12 million net worth. I mean, especially if he has any kind of goodness in his heart, if he really cared, if, if like Travelada was his little baby, right, his baby that he's really working, he'd certainly put 400K into it, right? You got to ask yourself, my friends, why doesn't he do it? And the answer is, is because he's lying to you. He is lying to you, just like he has done so many times in the past. And if you go to my other videos, okay, all you, got, all you have to do is go to Joseph Zabrowski channel, right here and you'll see just a whole host of videos and I go into great detail about all of the websites that people have created regarding Phil Piccolo and um, how he he's called the one one man internet crime wave and all the money that he has stolen from people here's one of those sites right here and in this particular site he talks about how uh, he's having a conflict with this one guy, Robert Brutus. People, do, do you know where you? Uh, he's he's saying to Robert Brutus, people do, do know where you live. Be careful. You are about you are not above reproach, especially from God. And there's other threats from him, but this site doesn't come up actually. And it goes on to say, in recent emails from Phil Piccolo have gone far beyond these veiled threats and subtle warnings. The WWSN, which I think is another uh, online business is of the opinion, I don't know if that is the case, but is of the opinion that his recent statements and behavior indicate a possible loss of sanity and have urged his remaining friends, associates, and loved ones to initiate an intervention to see if Phil gets professional help. We are also of the opinion that the that MLM community has put up with Phil Piccolo's scams and schemes 
for far too long. Rod, the MLM watchdog, Cook, agrees. He says, Bob, you are right. Piccolo needs to go. He, he is evil with his Christian BS. And it goes on and on. I'll put the links below this video. You can read them. Now, finally, what I want to share with you is um, in this email, it's so easy to refute these people because, I mean, it's like everything that comes out of their mouth is, a, is just a lie. I mean, they're like pathological liars. And um, um, it's just it's so easy. So right here he says that, you know, because of me putting out videos about him that they're not able to bring money into the company. And this is just a complete lie because, number one, travel out on their website, they've advertised for quite some time that they have over 200,000 members. And my videos, if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see 61 views, 26 views, 28 views, 86 views. I have one in there that's almost like 400. But they're all pretty small amounts of views. So, you know, 300 to 400 views, and they have 200,000 members, but yet that's my videos are affecting... Are the, are the means of them not able to bring money into the company to pay you? The point is that they're, they're just lying. That's what they do, just like they've always done, okay? They're lying so that they can squeeze, they can slime their way out of this. And beware, my friends, I tell you from, from experience, if you, ever, if you ever remember USI Tech and others, they, what they will do is they'll put their website up like they're still doing business, and they'll gradually, very slowly just fade away off into the sunset with your money and the the um, with the passage of time you'll kind of forget about it and it won't mean as much to you and I'm telling you don't let that happen because if you do you're gonna lose all your money if you're smart you will stand up and do the things that I told you up front and and come together and get your money back it's very very possible for you to get your money back okay <clears throat> now basically he's saying here as I said, <coughs> that I'm the cause of my videos and stuff are the cause of them not being able to pay you. And the point, the, the truth of the matter here is that um, when they were stealing money from my back office, and I tell them over and over, um, you know, I said to them, I, I'm, I, I made it very clear to them that if, you know, if you don't pay me back my money, the money that you owe me, um, that you've taken from me over the last weeks or so that I'm going to bring a lawsuit against you. And I warned them. I told them over and over. I gave, in other words, I was very merciful. I gave them, I gave them a chance. I, I said, you know, I said, please, just please be decent and honest. Pay me what you owe me according to the terms of the contract. And this will be all over. And, and what I just said to you, it's very easy to prove because all I have to do is show you part of my video archive. Okay, and this is the travel out of back office. I recorded, we've recorded everything over the many months, the past months. And here is the actual, one of the actual emails that after they stole money from me in the back office, I told them, and, and I'm going to read it to you. It says it right here, okay? It's right here on the screen, center screen. It says, you want to see me market? You will see me market for the good of others. Now I have a cause. Okay, let's see. I have a real ministry for God, and you can be assured, I do, I, my, my ministry is called Our Father's Productions, and I will tell everyone far and wide, online, who you are, what you're up to, and the details of my situation with Travelada relative to your very own terms. I've already done that through numerous videos. I will simply speak the truth to help others. I, of course, will go to the Better Business Bureau and all the other scam watch online sites and post the truth because it is my duty in God's eyes to do so to save others from your crimes. So basically, they didn't pay me, and now I had already given them, told, warned them one time, so I'm now I'm warning them a second time here. So it says, so you go right ahead with your tyrannical behavior. You think you're going to carry out your injustice and possibly save yourself $7,000, which is what they owed me. I know that's what you're thinking. You will lose at least $700,000 when I am done sharing the truth online, and that's a conservative estimate. Now, isn't it amazing? When I wrote this, I, I knew nothing about the lawsuit with Vista Network. It's almost like it's prophetic. They stole $700,000 from Vista Network, and Vista Network's bringing a lawsuit against them, probably a multi-million dollar lawsuit against them. But yet, that's the exact amount that they stole in cryptocurrency from Vista Network, and I said it before I even knew it. 
<coughs> okay, so I am an expert YouTube marketer, and I will very slowly and consistently, day after day, post the truth relative to a video a day with all the keywords in the right place to save people from your illegal actions. I have prayed to God from my heart regarding this matter with you many days now, and you will get what you deserve. You have sown dishonesty, injustice, and fraud, and you will reap accordingly. And you will not be able to say that you were not offered mercy because this is the second and last time regarding this matter that I am offering it. You pay me back my money according to your terms, not the made up ones as you go along, or I am going or I'm going for it. You have my word, something it's clear you're not real familiar with keeping your word. It's the last time I'm offering it. If I don't hear from you by 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today, Thursday, 2019, I will begin to take action. Sincerely, Joseph. This is in the this is one of my support tickets that I wrote back to them after I told them, you know, stop stealing money from me. Okay, so what happened here? <coughs> I just explained what happened, but very clearly, I was willing to do. You know, I was willing to. Just get paid and get out of get out of dodge, but they wouldn't do it. Okay, and so when you go to an email like this from Phil saying that I'm the cause of it, no, no, Phil, all you had to do is pay me what you owed me legally and lawfully according to the terms of your contract, and not one video would have been made on you, but you chose not to, and I'll tell you why you chose not to because. One of the re what I see amongst all these groups online is they most of the the so-called uh, kingpins they all have this tyrannical uh, attitude amongst them. Okay, they all think that they're they can do whatever they want, whenever they want, however they want. And so basically, what's going on here is little Phil thinks that he can just <clears throat> he can just go crap on people, and everybody's just supposed to roll over and go, ha, 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 okay, well thank you, Phil. Could you crap on me some more? <laughs> um, mm, uh, isn't it cute how he just steals from us thousands of dollars? <laughs> See, Phil's used to just like dealing. I don't know who he's used to dealing with different types of people, but you know, sooner or later, you you come into contact with the wrong person. You know, like a real man who's going to call you on your BS. And I happen to be one of those men. Okay. And so that's what's going on here. And he's going to face his music, hopefully in prison. I hope he goes to prison so that he will have plenty of time to think about eternity and how that's going to play out for him. Okay? So that's, that's basically it, my friends. And I, I, will, I will submit to you again, in all honesty and truthfulness, you guys come together as a group. I will help you do it. And we can bring a class action lawsuit against these, these so-called people. Who have taken your money and I can almost 100% assure you they're gonna slime their way off into the distance okay and you know that that guy I just showed you he he's worth probably well at least 12 million dollars if not much more he could pay that four hundred thousand dollars lickety split today and you could have your money okay and that's a fact and you know it according to what I just showed you till next time my friends Take care and God bless. I'll put links below the video to back up everything that I just said.